can you just explain for us a little bit about before you came to church and, and before God did a wonderful work in your life, what kind of things were you going through and what was your life like before Christ? Okay, so it happened about five years ago. I came to um, the conference with Wise Man Harry. And, um, but well, before that, I didn't live a godly life at all. I didn't serve him. I did had my own desires. And the devil lied to me a lot, and I believed his lies. And I fell into a drug addiction. And I had the drug addiction for a little while. And then I'm like, you know, I knew that God had a purpose for me, like something greater for my life. And I was like, okay, you know, I will eventually, I'll, you know, I'll repent and, you know, I'll turn to Christ and I'll do all that. But then something kept on holding me back. Something, you know, I, did, I couldn't even open my mouth to say, you know, God, forgive me, please, you know, say, you know save me. But then um, something, I woke up one morning and I'm like, this is so tiring already. I, don't, I hate waking up every morning and trying to, like, you know, be sick or, like, having withdrawals or having something, you know, needing needing drugs or needing something else that wasn't God. So for how long were you addicted to drugs? I was um, on drugs for like six years, like five and a half years. And then, so it was like a really deep drug addiction that I couldn't like, I couldn't do it myself. And I knew that one time I woke up, I was like, I can't do this myself. And then my aunt were, they were going to the Wiseman Harry conference five years ago. And I was like, okay, this is it. This is like my time to, this is my time to go. I got to go. I got to do this. And so I came to the conference, and I remember I was like, the whole time I was at the conference, I was like, okay, I know this is, you know, this is going to help me. This is going to, you know, set me free. This is going to, you know, get closer to God. And, but I was like, look, and I saw like the, all the people manifesting, and uh, the man of God was like, they're falling, and like demons are ca being casted out. And I looked to my aunt, I'm like, is this normal? Because I come from a really, I came from a really just Christian background, Christian religious, and it's more religious than it is just like non-dominational. So I was like, um, okay, this is totally not normal. I'm like kind of scared and freaked out. I was like, okay, this is not, I was like, oh, I hope I don't like manifest or I hope I don't make a fool of myself and the demons are going to talk something weird and like expose me completely. I'm like, oh my goodness. So then I was like, okay, well, this, as the man of God was coming, I was, uh, the white, wise man here was approaching me. I felt like a whole, like, my whole body was, like, hurting. I could, I was, like, standing there. I couldn't even, like, worship. I couldn't even sing. I couldn't do anything. I'm just, like, frozen. And then it's just, I, I just was completely, like, I sat down on the chair. And then as he approached me, um, like, he put his hand on my head, and, like, everything was just hot. And then I, um, I started, I, I just, what I remember was I was just, like, walking back. Like, his, he had so much anointing. That I was like, so when something inside of me was like completely like just walking away. And I'm like, okay, I kind of walked away from him. And then the only thing I could remember after that was, um, I, f I guess people told me that I started manifesting. But I didn't know what I said because that whole thing, like I couldn't even find the video to show, like, or to even hear what I said. So then, um, so he's, as, what I remember him saying, he's like, okay, get up. This woman is set free. So I'm like, okay, you know, I really didn't feel anything. Because some people are like, oh, you feel like so much difference. You know, you felt completely, I did feel a little bit different. I felt a little bit lighter. That's about it. I felt light. I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I've been delivered. I've been set free. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. So then afterwards, nothing, I mean, after the, after I got delivered, I went to um, like a rehab program um, up in Oregon. And I went there for six months. And then the first day I got there, it was so funny because some of the girls there, they were like, even like with me having like a really like deep drug addiction, people were like, oh my goodness, you don't have any withdrawals or nothing? I'm like, no, are you supposed to? Like, um, uh, no, I don't feel, I just, I just feel set free. And then they're like, well, oh my goodness, did you bring anything with you in your bags? So, you know, you want to share something? I'm like, I didn't bring anything. I came here to actually get help. And then they're like, oh, well, that's so, okay, that's cool. They're like really, really surprised that I didn't have any withdrawals. Like, and I knew because that day, like I, and when I got delivered, like, I got set free completely from drugs. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. And then, so, so after the program, um, I, I, still, I still went back to, like, uh, my church, so a religious church. And, you know, I had a, started living, a, like, a healthy lifestyle, you know, clean, not doing anything, but, you know, not doing any drugs, not, you know, set free from that. But I still didn't have that living church, like that living support system, like even just like no home groups, no, um, like nobody, nobody around just like, you know, to pick you up when you're like, you're feeling down or you want to go have like, you know, a prayer closet. I was, 
Never, I never had that connection. I was just going to church, you know, doing the regular thing, praying when the church was praying, singing hymns like everybody did, no worship, no, not like none of that. And so then I kind of slipped back into like, back into um, like, you know, hanging out with the wrong crowd. And then, but during that time, the thing is, I ne- the devil never really tempted me with drugs though, because I knew that day I was set free with, from drugs. I never had that temptation to do drugs, but I did step back and I started, uh, you know, going out, hanging, partying and stuff like that, drinking. And then the devil kind of grabbed me and chained me back up. And so I was like, man, you know, like, I know I lived free. I know what this feels like. So I'm like, and then I remember a week before I came here, I was like, so done with it again. I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm like, Jesus, I can't, like, I know what it feels like to live freely. Like I cried out to him. I remember like exactly the week before I came here, it was two months ago. I'm like, oh my goodness, like, I cried out, like, honest cry out. I'm like, okay, God, please, you know, don't leave me this way, not, no, like, not fully committed to you, because I know what it feels like to be committed fully, fully to you, and I want to, like, do that, and there's, like, one place that I know, like, I can live committed and, like, serve and have people around me that are, you know, like, a support system, like a living church, and that's here. So I'm like, oh my goodness, okay. I, yeah, let's put our hands together for Jesus. So just quickly to clear things up, you had said that you had got completely set free from drugs. And when you went back home and you went through that, uh, well, you went through the rehab program and everything and, and you didn't have any withdrawals and God was doing a great thing in your life, but you went back home and you didn't have that support system. You didn't have that living church to build you back up. So while you didn't go back to drugs, this Satan began to tempt you in a new way and you kind of fell back in that. And then that's what brought you back to Pasco to Hungry Generation. Is that right? Yeah. So then the week before, but the week before I was, I was like, okay, I'm, not, I'm done living this kind of way. I'm like, I know there's a better life for me. Again, so I'm like, okay, so the week before, the devil already knew in his, you know, he knew that I was already getting to, uh, like, planning to come here. So he tried to stop me so, like, in every single way. It was like, um, at night, I would have, like, horrible nightmares, horrible, like, dreams, and I would see, like, I would see the spiritual world. There was, like, demons around my room, and I could hear them saying, okay, you know, she... They knew what God had planned for me, so they're like, "Okay, you know, we're gonna try to, we're gonna make a plan to stop her from coming here." And they, it, it was, it was everything. Like even from my flight coming here, I was, it was supposed to be delayed. But I'm like, "Oh no, I am running down that concourse. I'm gonna make my next flight." So I came here, and then um, a pastor prayed for me so I can sleep better because I would always have like horrible nightmares. It was just, it was like completely vivid. Everything like the spiritual was uh, like super vivid for me. And um, pastor prayed for me, and he declared that, okay, I proclaim and declare that you're going you're gonna to sleep well, no nightmares, no nothing. And sure enough, like the next day, or as I went to sleep that night, I had no nightmares. And ever since then, I have no nightmares. It's like I sleep like a baby. Yeah, let's get up for Jesus. So then, um, and then now it's like, now I go, like this church is really, like within the two months that I've been here, it's, it's just everything's like on fire, like this is a living church. Like back home, I mean, it's like, it's, there's a church, yeah, but it's not, you can't, I, you can't feel the presence of God as much as you can in this church. So, and then even just to get, even just to get connected and started being like involved in everything in church, like I started doing um, power of evangelism and it's just it's so awesome to see how God can like move, you know, through other people to save other people's lives, you know, getting them set free from drugs and even just, set free from healing or just healing them, healing and all that. It's just a miracle to see what God can do in this church, and I love it. Amen. Let's put our hands together one more time for Jesus. So, Ella, now that you've been here, now that you've been coming to Hunger Generation for about two months, in what other ways have you gotten involved, and what has God been doing in your life since you've been here? Uh, since, yes, yeah, since I've been here, um, I started doing the internship. Which is really awesome every day, you know, like getting devoted for like in the morning prayers, you know, opening up, even just opening up with some people. Okay, like I was like before I was thinking, okay, open up with prayer, just good morning, Jesus, that's it, you know. But spending that hour just devoting yourself right before internship just to God and just it's just makes your day so much better. And then even through internship, you're just learning more and more about God's grace and how powerful he can, how powerful he really is. It's just all that sets in you, and then you, it gives you more encouragement to go out there and, you know, tell other people what he's doing. Amen. And lastly, what has been your experience like when you've been doing Power of the Evangelism? You know, many people have given wonderful testimonies about what God has done, but how has it personally affected you? 
for me, it's made me okay. Uh, it's made me more like soft-hearted and more compassionate. Um, every time I do see, like, uh, go out to Power Edge, as I see people struggling, I'm like, okay, you know, I've seen them. I've I've been there. I've done that, or I've done this kind of, you know, I've lived that kind of lifestyle. I know how they're feeling. All they need is just the love and just just some encouraging words and it's inspired me so much to go more and more because I'm like okay I have the compassion for these people it's like we pray for compassion we can't, we pray for you know more boldness and I just step out there and have compassion and boldness and it's just like wow it's awesome amen let's put our hands together for Jesus and lastly Ella what is your advice to some people who might be here today who are or who are watching us online via live stream who may have been struggling with things that you have struggled with with drugs even with alcohol or maybe they've backslidden in life how can you encourage them and what advice do you have for them um, well like they always say you know don't you know just go do it but yeah it's like it's some people I've noticed they're like oh it's not for me you know power of is not for me doing this is not for me but it is actually in the Bible it says you know go on to the whole and share into all creation because we were meant to do that we were you know we were meant to spread the word and even if you have some kind of like doubt or like nervousness just get the pray for that boldness for God to like just step out of your comfort zone step out and just go and just do it and you'll see like great blessings and great miracles right after that because ever since I started you know before I I came to church and I was just sitting on the pews I wasn't doing anything for God I didn't I was just sitting there expecting for God to bless me oh bless me with this bless me with that but I never gave that 50 50 for him so as soon as you step a little out of your comfort zone, you'll see blessings back. Because I've been seeing blessings since I came here. So, Hallelujah.